Gentlemen, please welcome Executive Vice President and CEO, CFO of Hess Construction and Engineering Services and the Montgomery County Chamber of Commerce Chairman-Elect, Chris Carpenito. <laughs> Visionary Award recognizes an individual or an organization for its innovation and tremendous contributions to the county and beyond. The Chamber's Board of Directors chose tonight's recipient of the Visionary Award because of his dedication and vision in creating a unique place to grow our future innovators and his leadership in federal information technology. To present the Visionary Award, I'm pleased to invite to the stage Visionary Award sponsors the University System of Maryland Foundation, University of Maryland College Park Foundation, the universities at Shady Grove, represented by University System Board member, trustee of the University of Maryland College Park, and Ernst & Young partner, Robert Bob Bedingfield. Please join me in welcoming Mr. Bob Bedingfield. Thank you very much for that kind introduction. Uh, I can't tell you how tickled I am to be here today to say a few words about our great friend, Cliff Kendall. Cliff Kendall is one of the giants of Montgomery County business and community activities and remains highly respected by everyone who ever worked with him, competed against him, and really anyone who ever crossed paths with him in his 50-year-plus innovator career, uh, innovative career of service and commitment to our county and our community. Cliff co-founded Computer Data Systems, Inc., CDSI, in the late 1960s and became one of the pioneers of the federal government professional IT services industry. CDSI started with four employees, grew rapidly to become one of the country's top 25 government contractors. Cliff was president, CEO, and or chairman of Montgomery County-based CDSI for over 25 years. In the late 1990s, when Cliff and his management team agreed to sell CDSI to a Texas-based company, CDSI had over 4,000 employees and hundreds of millions of dollars of revenue. A few years later, the core of CDSI's original business was subsequently sold by that Texas-based company to Montgomery County-based Lockheed Martin. And Cliff likes to say that CDSI has returned home to Montgomery County. Right after CDSI's sale, Cliff ruptured his Achilles heel under very suspicious circumstances. <laughs> and after, after an extensive investigation led by our great friend John Brophy, it was determined that the injury was because Cliff fell off his wallet. A resident of Montgomery County, Cliff has been an important catalyst in improving our local business community. He was chairman of the Technology Council of Maryland, served as chairman of the Greater Washington Board of Trade, was chairman of the Montgomery Prince George's County Business Roundtable, president of the Montgomery County Education Connection, and also served as a member of the board of the Maryland Economic Development Commission. Among many other things, Cliff currently serves as chairman of VSE, a very successful services and technology company. Cliff devotes a great deal of time and energy to higher education. Cliff's a graduate of the University of Maryland at College Park, where he currently serves as a trustee. He was a member of the Board of Regents of the University System of Maryland for 12 years and just recently completed serving his eighth year as its chairman. He has also served on the Association of Government Boards of Universities and Colleges, was an adjunct professor, uh, adjunct professor of Johns Hopkins University teaching in their MBA program at Shady Grove, and served on the board of the universities of Shady Grove. In fact, about 20 university at Shady Grove students are here tonight to show their support for the Kendalls and to thank them for all they have done for the students at the University of Shady Groves. Where are you students? Cliff also founded, chaired, and served as a director of the Montgomery County Community Foundation, has served as a board member of the University of Maryland Medical System. Cliff is also an avid University of Maryland at College Park sports fan and supporter. 
In preparing for this introduction and recognizing that Cliff essentially receives an award every Wednesday evening, <laughs> I decided to do some research. So I googled Clifford M. Kendall. This is true. I received 241,000 hits. I then googled Clifford M. Clifford M. Kendall awards and received 46,000 hits. This is true. Now obviously you have to go through that. By way of comparison, I googled myself <laughs> and had three hits, two of which are legal matters that I assure you have no basis at all. Well, once I got into this Google stuff, I obviously needed to expand my research on Cliff, and I came up with the following recent award activity for Cliff. Greater Washington Board of Trade Leader of the Year. George Washington University inaugural George Washington President Alumni Award. Greater Washington Business Hall of Fame inductee. Greater Washington Government Contracting Hall of Fame Award. Tech Council of Maryland Lifetime Achievement Award the Posse's Man of the Year Award. The Spirit of Maryland, the Spirit of the University of Maryland at College Park Alumni Award. And now to top it off, the Montgomery County Chamber of Commerce Visionary Award. Not bad for a guy who grew up in Northeast Washington, D.C. I think that you agree that Cliff is quite a guy. In doing this research, I also came upon the fact that Cliff has actually dabbled in leading edge clothing design. And especially related to one of Cliff's pastimes, golf. Here we have a picture. Here Cliff models traditional golf attire. And I assure you that the smile on his face is no doubt from the fact that Cliff, AKA the silent golf assassin, has again won at golf and collected a few dollars from his golfing companions. And here he models this, <laughs> and here, and here, okay, S stay with me on this, stay with me on this. Here he models this multi-purpose rain suit, which he designed, and he cleverly claims is great protection for foul weather and safe sex. Cliff, uh, Cliff, uh, Cliff, Cliff, good luck with this, uh, this, this, this innovative line of golf attire. Okay, I have, I, have, I have talked a lot about Cliff's many achievements and accomplishments, and I need to mention Cliff's greatest achievement and joy, and that is having been married to Camille for nearly 60 years. Camille and Cliff have four grown sons and 11 grandchildren. Cliff Kendall is a lucky guy. The Kendall's contributions to our county and state are wide ranging, including service and uh, philanthropy in education, art, finance, and the high technology industry. They are excellent role models and wonderful people. It is a great personal honor for me to present the Montgomery County Chamber of Commerce Visionary Award to our friend Cliff Kendall for his leadership, innovation, and tremendous contribution to our county and, and beyond. I know of no one more deserving. Congratulations, Cliff. I want to say thank you, Bob, but I'm not, <laughs> not quite sure. Uh, you need to know that uh, Bob yesterday took me and uh, my minister uh, out to play golf. I have never been whipped so bad in my life. 
I know he has no chance of going to heaven. <laughs> just, just, uh, Bob, uh, Bob, you heard about that Posse Award, and those are p pictures from the Posse Award that uh, I received some year. Very, very important award uh, that uh, is held in secret uh, uh, once a year, a small group of golfers. Bob is a sheriff of the posse. <coughs> and there are Bob and uh, John Brophy, John Coleman, and Bill Murphy, who are all here tonight, are self-appointed security and transportation for Camille and me. Now, sometimes in this role of security and transportation, they're a little overzealous, and uh, I have to control them. But uh, one thing I have insisted, that they not carry weapons, and although they're here tonight, uh, I think we're safe. Uh, if there's any rowdyism, I know they'll take care of it for us. So, <clears throat> when, uh, when Gigi came to me a few months ago and said she would they'd like to consider me for this visionary award. I, I told Gigi, I said, you know, Gigi, I, I'm not really a visionary and I don't deserve this kind of award. I'm more an implementer. And you know how she is. She, she says, no, no, you're, you're a visionary. And, uh, and then I said, well, <laughs> I, I don't quite see it that way, but uh, <laughs> if uh, you want to do this, let's, uh, Let's go ahead. And I said, well, will I have to make a talk? And she said, oh, yeah, you'll have to receive the award. And I said, well, you know, public speaking is not my forte. And she said, well, it doesn't have to be uh, very long. Now, now, Bob used a lot of my material, and I didn't know that tonight. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I thought I would take a few minutes and try and point out some of the discrepancies in Gigi's uh, thinking <coughs> about... Uh, about 12 or 13, 14 years ago, when one of my granddaughters was uh, seven years old and in the second grade, I guess their teacher asked them to bring their father, their grandfathers, or, or parents come in and talk about their business. And she asked me if I would come into the class and give a, a little speech. And I, I said, sure, I'd be delighted to. Well, it had been a time when our company had been very involved in some protests. So I decided to talk about the intricacies of, of uh, filing a protest and winning a protest <laughs> and, and, uh, and, and the nuances that went with this. I gave this speech. <laughs> and this uh, young lady in the class came up to me and very emphatically said, Mr. Kendall, that's the worst speech I've ever heard. <laughs> And, and I felt kind of bad, and, and then my granddaughter came up, and she grabbed me by the hand. Soon she said away, she said, Grandpa, don't pay any attention to her. She just repeats what all the other kids say. <laughs> <laughs> but going, going back to this visionary thing a little bit, uh, <clears throat> Camille and I grew up in the Washington, D.C. area, but uh, we ended up in Chicago, and I received a call from one of my college buddies, and he said he and two other guys were going to form a firm, and they wanted me to come back and join them. And I considered this and decided to do that. And I, I left a rather high-paying job with a major management consulting firm who at that time declined to participate in software development or program, provide programming support took a pay cut, we borrowed money on our insurance policies, moved back to Washington, and all the time while Camille accepted my decision to go, she kept reminding me repeatedly, don't forget we have four children to put through college. Well, as Bob mentioned, we started CDSI in 1968 and grew from four to 4,000 people. We were a typical software company in the industry and I don't know how many of you remember, but at that time, uh, we were often referred to in very derogatory terms, something called Beltway Bandits. 
And, uh, and you know, I cringed and, and didn't like that at all. So whenever I had a chance, I would go out and correct that and explain that CDSI was really Parkway Patriots. <laughs> In December of 1997, we merged with the ACS, and it was a very successful merger from, from uh, almost every respect for both companies. Certainly not my original vision, but there was a knock at the door, and at least it was open. Oh. I have a, a note from the management they'd like me to read. Uh, those of, uh, this is dedicated, this is for those of the you that used uh, valet parking tonight. Call the police, there was no valet parking tonight. <laughs> Speaking of a visionary, <laughs> on a, a little more serious note, there was a guy named Harvey Kushner, who was then president of Tech Ops uh, in Montgomery County, and he called me and he asked me that I join a group to form the Montgomery County Technology Council, whose purpose would be to increase the amount of higher education available to the citizens of Montgomery County. At that time, the only higher education we had in Montgomery County was Montgomery College. This desire for more higher education in Montgomery County has been consistently supported by our county executives and our county council members. At that time, we were successful in getting Governor Schaefer with support provided by our Montgomery County state representatives, particularly P.J. Hogan and Nancy Kopp, to provide funding for the first built building on the Shady Grove campus. John Hopkins University saw the need and opportunity for more higher education in Montgomery County, and the Technology Council encouraged and worked with the, their university in the campus development. I had the privilege of teaching as an adjunct professor for six years, and I always like to recognize and thank my former boss Eileen Amir for the wonderful experience. <laughs> After the second building was built on the Shady Grove campus, providing classes nights and weekends primar primarily for individuals pursuing advanced degrees, there was still a strong demand for higher education, and the third building was planned. The then current two buildings were lightly used during the week. The third building was be to be comparable to the first two buildings in size and structure. It was Charlene Nunley of Montgomery College and Earl Palmer Brown of the Earl Palmer Brown Advertising Agencies as members of the Shady Grove Advisory Board who suggested and pushed for the campus to offer day classes for juniors and seniors so that the Montgomery College students who finished their associate's degree could proceed and receive a bachelor's degree without leaving Montgomery County. Of course, the building had to be redesigned and made much larger with more support facilities to handle both day and evening classes. There was more vision there than any of us realized at the time. Shady Grove has been a huge success, providing opportunities for so many of our citizens who would not have had otherwise had the opportunity to complete a four-year degree. It has been recognized nationally by higher education leaders as a great entrepreneurial success. This, in large part, because of the leadership of Stuart Edelstein, last year's recipient of this award. Tonight, we have a group of students who attend the university's Shady Grove with us who might not have had the opportunity to complete a four-year degree, and who we are expecting to be the visionaries of the future. Shady Grove students and Stu, please stand so we can let you know how much we appreciate what you are doing. <laughs> I 
I would like to speak about the Montgomery County Community Foundation. I was the founding chairman and was responsible for pulling together the founding board. But it was Bob Lenos who was a visionary. He was the chairman of the National Capital Region Community Foundation. He called me one day to meet at his lunch table at the Hay Adams. And I knew both from past experience and stories, it was probably going to be an assignment to help with a cause. He asked me to start the Montgomery County Community Foundation and make it an affiliate of the National Capital Region Community Foundation. It all made sense to me. However, I explained to him, I'm still chairman and CEO of CDSI. I was then chairman of the Tech Council and my plate was already overloaded. It was hard, but I declined. About a year and a half later, I received a call from Bob. He had read in the paper, my term as chairman of the Tech Council has ended. <laughs> now, he called me and he said, now that we have finished as chairman of the Tech Council, you can get the Montgomery County Community Foundation going. Uh, I did, John Puente, Chuck Lyons, D. Metz, Willard, Derek, Tony Natelli, and I, with Sally Rudney on the staff doing an enormous amount of the work got it going. The first year, 1996, we started with nine new funds and were able to uh, get donations of a little over $100 million in grants to charities. Last year, there were 263 funds and now a total of more than $11.7 million has been granted out of the Community Foundation for Montgomery County. The Community Foundation is something everyone should consider that has any philanthropic bent at all. Whether you have a large amount or a small amount of money to donate to charities, establishing a donor advised fund makes sense. When you make a donation to your own family fund, you get credit for an immediate tax deductible gift. The funds donated earn income from interest, dividends, and appreciation without being taxed. You can donate your funds immediately to the charities of your choice or let them grow without paying taxes on the growth. Best of all, it is easy to set up a fund and you do not have to do any accounting or file tax statements. That is all handled by the Community Foundation. I would also like to mention my term as a member of the Board of Regents for the State of Maryland. This is one of my most rewarding experiences. Again, I don't see myself as a visionary, but I had the privilege of, ser of serving with a group of very committed people, working together to enhance the educational opportunities for the residents of Maryland. I served 12 years on the board and was chairman for eight of those. The day-to-day -day leadership provided by Brett Kerwin, our chancellor, and his staff is exceptional. During my tenure on the board, we had some really talented and committed board members. As a result of the policies and programs developed by the board, we increased the number of students receiving a higher education, we increased graduation rates, we introduced new teaching methods that showed increased learning outputs while at the same time decreasing instructional costs also, we saved millions of dollars by initiating an effectiveness <coughs> and efficiency program that has become an integral part of the operations of the system. Some of these changes might be considered visionary, but most were the result of dedicated individuals working together. I sit on the board of the AGB, the Association of Governing Boards for College and Universities, which is a national organization dedicated to improving the governance of all college and universities. The state of Maryland is regarding as having one of the best, if not the best system in the country. Part of this is because of the recognition of Brett Kerwin and his effectiveness as chancellor and his role as a national educational leader. The rest has to do with the commitment of the state to higher education. We are blessed to have represented representatives 
<coughs> in Annapolis who have been great supporters of the University of Shady Grove and higher education in general. Before closing tonight, I would like to indicate that I have previously demonstrated at least some visionary ability. About 62 years ago, I met a young lady in college was, who was very attractive, smart, and great fun to be with. As a result, I had a vision. I had a vision. She would make a lovely life companion. Sure enough, I was right. We married 59 years ago. <clears throat> I have often said she is the kindest, most caring, sweetest, and most generous person with her time and effort that I have never known. She constantly goes out of her way to make her life better for everyone. What I like is she has treated me that way for all these years. Camille, would you play stand and let the people know that I was a visionary? <laughs> In closing, I would like to introduce another person that I think is on the visionary track. In May, my granddaughter, Whitney Kendall, graduated from college with a nursing degree. During the last two summers, she has spent time as a volunteer in Uganda. She has seen a need for a nursing clinic and plans to raise money and go to Uganda and build a nursing clinic. Within three years, she hopes to encourage doctors to join the clinic and provide additional medical treatment. She has shared her business plan with me and requested a critique. After reviewing it, and I thought it was very good, I did make a couple of observations to Whitney. Specifically, I asked her, have you considered getting a year or two of experience for setting out on this plan? And the other major observation, I don't think you have nearly enough funds to make it go. Her response was, there is a great need right now, and with the help of others, we can make a difference. And we will just have to raise more money. Last week, I received a notice from my son, Clark. There's a fundraiser at her home next Sunday. <laughs> if, if, if anyone would like to join Whitney's program, I happen to have copies of the invitation in my vest. Whitney, would you please stand so we may all wish you Godspeed on achieving your vision. Whit <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, members of the Chamber of Commerce, thank you so much for allowing me to participate in this wonderful evening. Thank you very much. Thank you.